All right, guys, welcome back to the Neutral Zone. I'm your host, Terrence Checkett, and I'm here with Ryan. He's going to be my co-host. Ryan, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Ryan Ginsberg. I'm the director of league expansion now at the NCBA, and I'm also a coach for Ohio State. Awesome. So, yeah, um, I'm Terrence. I'll be the primary host of the Neutral Zone this year. Uh, I am a captain and the president of OU, Ohio uh, Club Dodgeball. Um, so, yeah, uh, our basic plan for this episode is just to do a kind of uh, overall season preview. We'll go through all the regions, talk about some of the teams, uh, returners, expectations, that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll do a little preview of the, the Buckeye opener this weekend, which will be the first NCDA tournament of the year. Uh, I'll just talk about some matchups and stuff. And then towards the end, uh, the podcast team has a little announcement uh, for a new little segment of the Neutral Zone. So I'll talk about that uh, a bit more later. Um, Ryan, you want to start on the East Coast? Yeah, let's get to it. Um, so for the East Coast this year, I think this is the year that uh, Penn State finally takes over as the number one team on the East Coast. I know in the past it's mostly been JMU, and in the past, even more in the past, Towson has been that top team. But I don't think Penn State loses much. I think they lose Zach Eck and maybe another player or two, but they return a lot of their key contributors from last year. So I think this is the year that, you know, they finally take over. And the rumors are there will be an East Coast Dodgeball Cup this year. So if I had to place a preseason prediction on who wins that, I think I would go Penn State. Um, Hunter Stewart, he was a second team last All American last year. I think he's pretty uh, favorite to make first team this year. He's really great thrower, just one of the probably the best player in Penn State. Plays their style, can get kills with his arm, make catches, block. It's just he's a tough out, and he'll just get plenty of kills throughout the match. I think he's really the top guy in Penn State. And you also have Cloud, who's a big vocal leader for them, kind of keeps him in check, even though they play that chaotic style i think he kind of keeps them in check and as much as they like want to like they like playing that chaotic style but he kind of it's like organized chaos so i think he kind of helps control that and they have a bunch of other players that can throw catch they can just do it all and they have it on so if they can keep it together throughout the year i think they'll be a really tough team to beat come spring semester nationals and jmu yeah. loses a lot which is why i think they you know slip to that number two spot i know eschenberg who's one of the best players in the league history um graduated this past year James Turner, the first team guy they lost, and Nick Spear, who was their president last year, they also lost. I think they just lose too much, even though they had a pretty good rookie class last year and they always recruit well. I think it's just too much of a loss to overcome what Penn State has going for them this year. Yeah, they're definitely going to need one of those stereotypical JMU tryouts where there's 150 kids lining up out the door. Um, and they all throw 70 somehow. Right. <laughs> no, yeah, they definitely need to recruit a lot. They lost – just about as much as you possibly can. Um, it's going to be pretty much just Trent Schaefer, um, the rookie Noah Con Conyer. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm high on him. He's he, I saw no, him a little bit last year. Yeah, Huge arm, and he definitely looked like he knew the game well, so I would expect him to be able to catch and block and have some great game sense by this year. No, so, when you, when you I have think those two, when you have those two anchors, you, your team definitely has a higher floor. Um, they can mm -hmm, kind for of, sure support you a little bit but yeah they're definitely gonna have to recruit if they want to keep up with psu because penn state on the other hand yeah they don't lose really anyone one of the most athletic teams in the whole league um so yeah it'll be interesting on the east coast and then we have uh some up-and-comers we have maryland um coached by the Fernalds. um they definitely took some steps last year i would say um they have uh what was he a third team all-american adam butts yeah i think he was third team yeah, they've yeah, been so hyping him up. He'll he'll jump up this year. Yeah, the, um, I know Dan himself is very high on what Maryland can do this year. He thinks they could even take down some the likes of like JMU and Penn State. He can give them some tough matches. So I don't believe they lose much at all. If anything, I think they might lose a player or two that started for them last year. But they were a young team last year, mm -hmm. and Dan and Zach are great coaches, great minds. So I think if they can get a solid recruiting class going, they can make some huge leaps. And when they do travel out of the region this year, they could have more success against better teams. I definitely agree. Um, rounding out the East Coast is UVA, Virginia. Um, I faced them on day one of Nationals last year, and they're definitely a really underrated team. Um, I would I would say their depth is kind of what got to them last year. Their top five, six guys are all really solid, good arms. They can survive. Um, but after that, it kind of teetered off a little bit. So if they can recruit well, 
I don't think they lost a whole lot. They might have lost a couple veterans, but um, a few of their captains are still going to be around. So that's another big school um, that, you know, all it takes is one good recruiting class and you're right up there. Yeah, for sure. Admittedly, I didn't get to see Virginia much last year. I saw maybe on a stream once or twice. And I didn't really get to see him in nationals much, but from what I heard, they got some solid guys, and I agree with you. I haven't heard of them losing much, so they can definitely take a next step forward. It would be cool to see them travel a little more. Than they, I know last year they kind of struggled with numbers, so I hope they didn't lose much able to recruit well so they can get out to more tournaments and get that experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no. And also we have a Stony Brook, a new team. They were club formed last year. This year they're looking to compete and pinch. Um, in the NCDA, so we'll see. Hopefully, they can make it out to a tournament, maybe to Maryland or Penn State. So and that, that's it's like a five-hour drive. I don't even know yeah. that. Yeah, it's on Long Island, so it's actually like forty minutes where I grew up. I actually toured it, so it'll be cool to see if they can come out and represent New York. It's like a four or five-hour drive to Maryland or Penn State if they do make the trip. But I've been talking to their captain, uh, Ben Sonat. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, so they're they're looking to make a trip this year and see if they can make it out to an East Coast tournament and maybe Nationals, but. Hope to see him out there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so we'll move on to the central division, central region. Um, UNL is the team that would was probably standing out in that region for the past couple of years. Um, definitely like the farthest nationals finishes from that region, uh, most All-Americans, um, but they have definitely lost a lot this season. Yeah, obviously the biggest name is Colby Chorak, who Two-time All-American, huge arm, athletic as hell, uh, mutiny player, so got to hype him up. Um, but, yeah, they, they lost him. I think they lost Trey Somro, who was their captain this past year. Um, I don't know how much they lose besides that. I remember playing them at war last year, even though we beat them up. They're a hyper-athletic team. They always have been. I actually played them the past two years, last year at war, and then two years ago at Nationals. Hyper-athletic team. I played them both years at Nationals, once, once on day one and once on day two. Yes, you know, hyper athletic. If they can get another recruiting class going, and maybe if that central region grows a little bit, they can get a little more experience. I think that's always been their issue. Is they come to national? Well, they went came to war last year, only playing like Nebraska, uh, Platteville. Sorry, they only played Platteville. So they came to, they just uh, when they came to war last year, they really didn't have much experience against like other top teams. So I think they struggled. Then they came to nationals. I think they went three and zero on day one. So obviously, once they have a strategy down, some experience, they can put it together against anyone. So. I hope yeah, the central really, region grows a little That really is a testament to making sure that you play against good competition throughout the year because their first time that they saw it, they struggled immensely. And then just after that, the next time they went back to that kind of level of like, yeah, the whole country is at these kind of tournaments. They were doing much better at nationals. So, yeah. Um, but it also, it says a lot about yeah, so West hope- expansion. We, we need to get out West so they have more people to play. So that's not as much of an issue. Yeah. And- yeah, we've been trying. You gotta get some teams out there. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think I know they they, they do it, still have, they have uh, last year. They, uh, they do still have Caleb Fowler, um, who is a great arm. If that's the name I'm thinking of, is that that's UNL. Yeah, right? they also have Noah Wiley. I think who's, Wiley. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah they, they, have, they have just got, got athletes for sure. Um, but yeah, we'll see about the leadership just, side of it because that that's that's right. Colby and Trey were definitely their encore leaders, uh, at least vocally. Um, yeah, UWP, so we'll see what how many tournaments they get to. Looks, yeah, yeah. UWP, I think they lose some. I think Austin Curie graduated, who was a solid player for them, mm-hmm. but they still have uh, Caleb Newell, who was a second team last year and first team. I think first team hopeful this year. He could definitely make it. Definitely. Um, and Thomas Zander is still there, I believe. So they still probably their two best players from last year are still returning. And I think they just need to get on the recruiting side because last year, I know when we played UWP, it was like get Caleb out, get Thomas out, and then just play smart dodgeball the rest of the way. And you want to yeah. have trouble against the rest of the team. So if they could recruit better, I think they could definitely, you know, take a step up into the next tier of teams around the league. Yeah, and I know uh... – a lot of their players played in the NDA this year, even if it was just one or two tournaments uh, with the pickaxers. So, you know, more experience against high level, high level competition uh, is not a bad thing. No, playing in the NDA will just make you because going from the NDA back to NCDA, it's like a whole different game. NDA is just filled with teams full of guys with arms, and you go to these NCDA teams that only have a few, and it just feels like like nothing. Like it's, you become so much better, you learn so much just from watching these. Literally, like the top NCD players of all time, still like they're still athletic. They're still in their prime. Yeah, they're just watching them play, you just learn so much. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, but yeah, Caleb Newell is definitely going to have to shoulder a lot of the offensive load for them, um, as usual. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if he could get some help, they could definitely jump jump into that next tier of of NCDA. Uh, yeah. The rest and of the then it looks like well. well, North Northern Kentucky new team coming to Buckeye opener. Yeah, led by West Peters, infamous special. West Peters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I was talking to him actually earlier today, and they have eleven confirmed coming to Buckeye opener, which I know is a lot. More. They when he started UC the first year, they were struggling to get eight. So it yeah. looks like he's learned from his uh, first expedition. The second expedition will be better, which is kind of scary considering how good the uh, the expedition know, at UC I, went. I, so I well, can already like NKU as like a powerhouse in like three years somehow. But it'll happen. Yeah, I think they play. But yeah, I think they I play CSU, Kent, and BG. No, that's a good schedule to start off. Um, but I know one yeah, of their I wouldn't be surprised is, if Yeah, one of their players is an OU alum, Jacob Fleck. Um, he used to play mm -hmm. on the OU team back when they won ODC in 2020. Um, he's a really talented player. He might be a couple of years past his prime, although I'm sure he would argue otherwise. But he's definitely uh, a veteran presence that any new team definitely uh, could use. Yeah. Especially West, in your first. Yeah, West can only do. Yeah, West can only do so much on the sideline. So having that on court help will definitely mean a lot to that team. And I would not be surprised if they were able to catch a win this Sunday. Me neither, because because they started practicing last spring, though, so they're not as like new to this sport as you might mm -hmm. think. So I wouldn't yeah. put it past them to get a win or two. But especially led by West, you don't know what he's cooking up down there. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see. Um, and then UK, uh, we were kind of maybe skeptical. Uh, after the end of last season, but it seems like they're practicing. Uh, seems like they got a team ready to go. So whenever they show up to, to a tournament, it'll be good to see them. Um, roster makeup wise, though, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, uh, I'm, I know David Mead graduated, and he was like one of their better players from last year. I only saw him a few times, and they struggled with numbers and depth. So we'll see what they put together this year, and hopefully they can improve on last year and maybe recruit a little better. Yeah. I mean they're a huge school. You you would think they can get some get some numbers, but yeah, yeah. Definitely hope for that. We saw them practicing on their Instagram, so that's a good sign. Yeah, and they used to be so good back in the twenty tens. They used to be a powerhouse around the league. So mm -hmm. hope they can yeah. get back to that and help us expand southward. Yeah. Uh is that it for Central? I believe so. so. On so CUW they... actually. At CUW uh -oh. in Illinois. Okay, yeah, yeah they are in Central. That makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah. two new teams from last year. Um, CUW actually had a – they got a win last year in Nationals, so they look good. Connor Knott, who's made all rookie last year for a brand-new team, was wildly impressive. Extremely. From what I saw, he had a great arm and a terrific game sense for someone who, one, just learned pinch, and two, also had to lead a team on the court. So, shout-out to yeah, him, too. Quickly. And, yeah, he's got a rocket arm. <laughs> yeah, so shout-out to him. That's wildly impressive, and I wouldn't be shocked if he – Found his name on an All American list this year. Not at all. And then Illinois, we both saw them last year at the Miami tournament. Uh, they're up and running. I think they have good numbers. I was talking to Charles, their captain over there, and Illinois, big school, they have good numbers. So I hope they can make it out to Miami again or a central tournament. Yeah. Some experience. It seemed like they brought like a pretty much full roster to Miami. Yeah. Last yeah. It's, it's, big school will do that to you. Yeah, I know. So yeah, we hope hopefully we see them uh, pop out to a couple tournaments, maybe host one, get the Ohio and Central region and right there, right in the middle. So would absolutely go over to Illinois. Yeah, I would I would take a trip even though I can't play. <laughs> so yeah, um, Central region, um, good amount of turnover, a couple of question marks. Um, but if you had to predict number number one by the end of the season. I think you just have to go with UNL, given the talent they you know they recruit. Even though they lost a good amount, I think they're just still better than any other team out there. They just got the arms, the catching ability. And I think by the end of the year, if they'll get enough experience to put it together and make another Elite Eight experience by Nationals. All right. Uh, Southern region, which is kind of new. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, so obviously as director of league expansion, I've been working to get some teams down there. Uh, North Georgia and Southern Georgia were teams in the past, obviously, pre-COVID. North Georgia made it to Nationals last year, and now it looks like North Georgia is hosting a tournament early October. It looks like yeah. it would be North Georgia, Southern Georgia, and Ole Miss, a brand-new team. The SEC uh, takeover has begun in the NCAA, it appears, so 
We'll see how much longer the rest of the team survive. But yeah, um, so obviously the captains down there have done a great job with bringing these teams back, putting all their effort into recruiting, and we'll see what they look like. Um, UNG had some athletes last year, so hopefully they stuck around. And it's just exciting to see the Southern region grow, and hopefully they can their friends can recruit more teams and we get a full region out of it soon enough. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Once you get one team in a region, you have to try to get a couple others so they at least have people to play against without traveling, right, like eight eight hours is probably the closest to Ole Miss. Yeah, yeah Price Bell over at Ole Miss has done a great job just reaching out to other schools. He's really, seems like his mind is all in just getting other schools involved. So hopefully it works out and we get a few to stick soon. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will shift over to the Michigan region. Um, you want to start with the powerhouses? Yes, yeah, so obviously the powerhouses are Michigan State and Grand Valley, um, both who lost a good amount last year. So we'll see what these uh, new players that got to lead their teams now, what they'll look like. Obviously, Michigan State lost their big four, right? Butler, Gerling, Kramer, I'm totally missing a name. DQ. Yeah, DQ, yeah. So the big four that kind of you know brought on that national title, they – we're all recruited together, I think. So they lose that big four, which is huge for on court and practice and everything. It's just everything. those guys are the lifeline of that team. So I know Alec Dean, who obviously had an unfortunate injury last year. Rumors are he's healthy. Which, but shout out to his bones. It was impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Shout he's out healthy. To his, yeah. To his physical trainer. Yeah. So physical hard for me to believe, but I'm not going to say they're lying. So I can't wait to watch him his first tournament. He's an electric player to watch. And now this is his team now, it appears. So I think Michigan State is, even though they lost their big four, I think they're still a top three team in the region. Uh, not in the region, but in the league. Uh, that's what uh, feet of one bearable. I got to see him again in NBA. They look awesome. They look like oh, they're really, really impressive players. Yeah, yeah. And one year of dodgeball experience. And they have a third rookie who doesn't get talked about as much, but Zach Van Fleet um, would be easily a starter on any team in the NCAA and probably on a lot of overtime rosters too. He's a really good rookie. Yeah, it just speaks to how well Michigan State recruits every year. It seems like just no one can catch up to them. I don't know yeah. what they do. Someone's got to find out their secrets, but they just find a way to recruit. It seems like a full starting 12 every year that could just play on any other team, but they can't because they just recruit six to all American players a year. It feels like. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure winning a natty isn't, isn't going to hurt their recruiting. So no, unfortunately not. Um, but I think it also speaks to Kevin and Becca Nguyen, how well they are able to recruit help out with the team and coach. Obviously and they're players, right? Yeah. It's not just about getting them there. You gotta, Got to put the yeah. work in. Yeah, they're obviously just fantastic dodgeball minds and care so much about the club. And it's good for that club, though, because clearly it's working. Hell yeah. Um, and, down the road uh, in Grand Rapids. Yeah, we got Grand Valley, who um, lost Josh Hill, Tyler Peach, Owen Israels, three of their overtime players. So we'll see what they look like. I'm super high on Matt Budai. When I saw the list come out last year and he was not on the All-Michigan list or any All-American list, I was mind-blown. I, I think when I voted, I had him like mid-second team. I think he's a fantastic player who gets overshadowed clearly way too much last year by just the other players on that team. I thought he was he's super bright, strong arm, catches everything. I don't know how he, Michigan region did not vote for him on the team. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, I will admit it's kind of hard to knock it overshadowed when you're playing with Ben Smart, Tyler Peach, Josh Hill. Um, yeah, of course. But no, Matt is an incredible player. Um, I think his survivability in catching, like, it reminds me of Peach's a lot. It's mm -hmm. not on that level yet, but, like, it reminds me of how he, Peach, can just stay alive forever. Um, yeah. And then Matt might even have a better arm than Peach. He is mm -hmm. great at crossing. Um yeah, he's an incredible player, and I would be shocked if he wasn't on first team All American this year. Yeah. yeah, obviously Ben Smart returns this year, and I know last year Budai kind of played that same corner as Ben Smart, so we'll see if they keep him together this year. If they split him up, I'll be interested to see how they split up their arms. I know Mason Smith, who was a rookie, all rookie last year, yeah, another just... really smart player, just typical Grand Valley guy. Can't get him out. They know how to counter so well. They all played that same side last year, kind of like Josh Hill and Israel's on that other side. So I'll be interested to see how they spread them out and see what the strategy looks like and how they recruit. Definitely. Uh, also throw Joe Barber in there. Yeah, Joe Barber, uh, transfer student, uh, grad, grad school now, Grand Valley. So it'll be interesting to see how he fits in 
another I think another arm and another catcher too. He can yeah. catch if you put one on him. Yeah, so I guess on paper it would seem that MSU and Grand Valley are due to run Michigan again, but there's a few other teams that are trying to creep their way into the rankings. Um, Western Michigan is one. Um, they've got a lot of talented players that have played a lot in the NDA this year, particularly uh, Matt Barnett and um, Ryan. Why can't it his last name? Allor. Ryan yeah. Allor, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two great players. Ryan especially is has just an incredible arm. He plays uh, on Omerta, and um, I actually have not played against Western Michigan in the NCAA ever. Uh, it's one of the last teams I have to play, so I hope that I get to play them this year. Um, but they should be good. They're not. They're not going to go down easy against anyone. No, definitely not. And they're a super passionate group. They're yeah. all over the Discord. They're. You could tell they're practicing all the time. Obviously, all of them love to play in the NDA, so they they're putting the work in to get better, and I think it'll pay off because playing against that NBA talent, as we said before, just makes you so much better of a player. Makes you a better catcher. Makes you smarter. You know, in the throw. You know, in the counter. Just because just you're watching these guys, it kind of just, it just, you just absorb the knowledge when you're watching these guys and it just makes you a better player just subconsciously. Yeah, yeah. but I couldn't be higher. Yeah. When the average level of dodgeball is higher, you have to play up to that level. And it just, yeah, it's it's a higher standard and it definitely, it makes you a lot better. Yeah, but yeah, but I can... it's definitely a team to look for. I know they'll be hosting towards the end of this uh, semester. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I couldn't be higher on Ryan Eller either. Just watching him play for America, he fits in. He fits in. He looks like the same talent as some of these, like NCDA greats. Like I know Mike Riley's on that team. Just some Tom Moran, Peter Bro. They he fits right in. So I wouldn't be shocked if he takes and even another step than he took this past year. For one of the better players in the NCDA, hyper athletic, to make not afraid to put his body in line, makes a catch, really strong arm, good blocker. He just does it all, and I think he's only gotten better just playing with a top level team in Omerta all summer. Yep. Uh, yeah. So Western will be an interesting team. Uh, who else? Saginaw. Yeah. Uh, Saginaw. I know they've struggled the past few years uh, recruiting. They've kind of been a top heavy team the last few years with Joe Barber, Cole Michela. Now that Joe Barber left, it's kind of just seems like it's Cole Michela and who they can recruit. Ooh, who the hell else? Yeah. So Cole's a fantastic player. Played with on the mutiny. So smart. Knows exactly what he's doing. So I hope they're him and the, him and the other captains able to put a good recruiting class together because I, I think they're just one recruiting class away from being right up in another the next tier right right behind Grand Valley and Michigan State again because they're in um, NCAA powerhouse in years past. So I hope they can get back to that because Cole's a fun player to watch and I want to see him in these big games against Michigan State and Grand Valley. Definitely. Um, Michigan. What else? What else we did? Uh, CMU made a few appearances last year. But I haven't really heard much from them about what their numbers look like. So, I don't know. It seems like CMU is up and down. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully they can make a few appearances this year, but we'll see what they look like. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's Michigan. Um, and for the final region, we got Ohio, uh, the deepest of all the NCDA regions. Of we course. have, what, nine teams this year, including Toledo? Yeah. Yeah, Toledo looks like they're just working on the final process of becoming a club and getting those practice times. So awesome. I hope they can make a tournament by the spring semester. Um, I've been talking with uh, who they got over there, and it looks like they got some members already. They're trying to just round up some guys so when they are a club, they can get out some tournaments. But they're so close to BG, I'd be shocked if they just can make something work this year. Yeah, definitely. Um, we can kind of work our way up maybe. Um, we'll start with two teams that definitely improved last year. Um, we saw them take strides, but we're still struggling with uh, recruiting and retention and just um, overall talent, and that would be Kent and CSU. Yeah, for sure. So I think Kent will take the bigger leap this year. I think they only lost Vanessa from last year, who's obviously a big loss as their president and captain, one of the best female players of all time. But mm -hmm. I saw Kent was another team where it just seemed like they their whole NCDA roster at every NDA tournament. So they've also been putting in the work. Um, I know uh, Kent was big on Brandon Stevens last year as a rookie. And mm -hmm. I've got to watch him a little bit. He is one hell of a catcher. Yeah, I don't think I've, I've seen him drop maybe like one ball. But, like, um, I ref them at nationals, uh, and he caught probably like five balls in two minutes to win them a point. Yeah, so. He's obviously a hell of a player. We'll see if he can take that next step throwing. I think that'd be his next step to become 
just an all-around complete player to be get that arm going because once people know you're a catcher, they're going to throw at you less. So you got to be able to develop that arm to yep. make make you a threat so people have to throw at you. I think the best example is Ryan Engelman from UC who oh, just graduated perfect. but perfect. coming back for the spring. But when he started, he was a hell of a catcher. No one knew him. Then he eventually realized, I'm not doing anything. No one's throwing at me. So I think he realized he had to develop that arm, and he's done that so well. So I hope Brandon can do the same thing to develop into that All-American type player. That is a fantastic comp, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. And with the um, yeah, State, they have um, – I think uh, Yo Sagnus is coming back and perhaps yeah. Leo. So oh. that will help him take the next steps forward with you know, Catherine, Catherine and Sky helping lead that team. Uh, they have a few – they've been another team that has a lot of representation at NDA. I know Antoine Lamar has a huge arm, so I hope he could just put it together this year and have a good year. But I think CSU could definitely take a step forward with Kent as being better than they were last year. Looks like both CSU and Kent will have at least 12, but I think Kent having a full 18 at Buckeye opener. So gonna be the huge. recruiting has clearly been well, so I'm excited to see what they bring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kent is a pretty well-organized team. They play together well. They're coached well. Um, and then CSU has a lot of those, yeah, veteran leaders like Catherine Mays and Sky Thornbury and um, Will McCartney or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we'll see what they can do. Uh, both of those teams would be at, uh, the Buckeye opener playing against yeah, and I think they, yeah, I think they play against each other. So really cool master watch to see who's kind of, you know, have that better recruiting class is going to take that step forward first. Yeah. Uh, moving into that next sort of tier, we have, um, like BG and Miami, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. So Miami, I'm really high on this year. I know they lost Ellie, not sure really who else. I think Ryan Williams, who's like a good arm for him last year. But I think they keep Max Edling, who's played for Frostbite a lot. Oh, this past NDA season, so I think I'm hoping that. And then Cole Ginocchio, I hope I'm saying that right. Another huge arm who's been improved, who I saw both like in the fall and the spring last year, and they're just all improving so much. Like we played them at war last year, and they gave us a run for our money a little bit. And I know they did. They gave you guys a run for your money at uh, – ODC last year was kind of like the surprise score at halftime for a little bit. Yeah. No, yeah. I think it was like 2-2 at halftime. Uh, yeah, we, we were playing a CSU right. and no one could focus. I mean, our whole bench was <laughs> lost there and you guys because it was a tie game. So I think it speaks to how well Miami is improving and what they could definitely do if they put it together for a full game this upcoming game. Yeah, I played them my freshman year, and it was pretty much like the same roster. Um, but my freshman year, we beat them like 7 nothing, And then last year, they put up a great fight against us at ODC. So... Yeah, there you go. Improvement. And I don't see any reason why it won't get uh, better this year. Yeah, just one more good recruiting class, and who knows what they can do this year. Yeah. Uh, as far as BG, um, but, yeah, I did want to say I do. I did play with Max Edling a lot this summer, and he is an incredible player. Um, I can't wait to play against him and watch him play in the NCAA this year. Same goes yeah, no, for um, Evan Brown of BG. I uh, also played with him on Frostbite this year. He's a super talented player, um, great arm, underrated catcher, um, and he's definitely going to be uh, tasked with carrying a lot of the offensive load for BG this season. They uh, they lost a couple mm -hmm. of their uh, big arms, Joey Irwin, um, Easton Huffman uh, to graduation. So, yeah, a lot of it's going to be on Evan Brown. Um, I know they have uh, Kay Strother, uh to be another on-court leader. He's a, an NCDA veteran. Um, he can help them a lot. But uh, seems like for BG, they're going to need to recruit this year for sure. If they yeah, want to take a step. Yeah, they definitely lost a lot with just um, uh, offensive uh, firepower and just with on-court leadership. I know Easton and Joey Irwin both played the middle last year for them. So it'll be interesting to see who kind of takes that middle middle uh, spot and kind of controls BG. Because then, you know, Evan Brown will be in a corner trying to just take on the load offensively. And I think he can, but I think he's going to face a lot of targets too. So it'll be interesting to see how we can handle the team throws. He's being targeted as soon as he throws. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's how it goes. When you, when you're the one guy on a team, you're, you're the one guy. So you're going to get targeted the second that you don't have a ball. Yeah, for sure. So it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the BG team handles out. They recruit well and how Evan himself handles that. If he's able to protect himself, you know, keep himself alive and we'll see what BG does. I'm, a little skeptical to see how they do this year, but I think they could definitely take the next step forward if they recruit well. Yeah. Um, Akron? Yeah, Akron, uh, obviously they retain uh, PJ and they 
one of two um, All American, first team All Americans to return this year, along with Ben Smart. So obviously that doesn't hurt you when you have a guy in the middle who could seemingly do it all. He throws from every arm angle, forward, backward, sidearm. Arm angles back. that you didn't even know existed. Like it's, arm angles, it's crazy. arm angles. I don't think I could do. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, I think Akron will still do well. I know they lost a lot, but they always just have huge numbers. So I'm not worried about the recruiting. And obviously, have Coach Adam Pfeiffer up there who keep his team in check, make sure they know all the rules and all the strategies. So I'm not worried about Akron. I think they'll be the same team they were last year. I mean, they were yeah, almost at a Final Four spot last year. So yeah, you can't take the scrappy out of Akron, no matter what you do. Um, no, they're always. Every they're going to be in every game that they play. It's yeah. That's just how it goes when you're a, a catching team like that. It, yeah. So yeah, uh, they, can get, they can get a good recruiting class, take a next step. They could definitely use a yeah, couple more, uh, especially losing clay, Michael young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go to the big huh? three. What yeah, it seems like the three. big three. It seems like they uh, we'll start with my team. Um, we're coming into this year having lost um, a few big, big players, um, namely Caleb Arnold and uh, Alex Janowskis, uh, who are two guys who kind of kept our program afloat, honestly, when uh, after COVID, other than Max Anthony, our president, obviously behind the scenes. But on the court, Caleb and Alex um, were instrumental in giving this big group of rookies that we had two years ago confidence. Uh, just teaching us the game, and uh, I think now we're ready. Um, in my class, when I was a rookie, it was me, Garrett, uh, Daniel Van Fleet, Austin Benzman, and Sean O'Donnell, I would say, are the big, like, five that we came up with, and that'll be the last year. This will be the last year for all four of them. Um, but we we think we have enough talent to be pretty much anyone in the league. It's just going to be a matter of putting it together for us. Um, but yeah, we uh, we do have a pretty good rookie class. We have a couple guys who are extremely promising potential rookie of the year candidates. Let's throw that out there early on. As uh, always. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm I'm super excited. Uh, we got three big games this weekend: OSU, UC, and uh, Kent State. I unfortunately will not be there. I have a prior commitment, but um, I have full confidence in my team to go three and zero this weekend. So. I'm excited for the season, but yeah, that's that's the scoop on OU right now. Yeah, I think you guys will oh, obviously. I will, I will mention one more thing. Um, kind of unexpectedly, we get one more year of service time from uh, Captain Max Steckel, which is going to be huge for us. Um, he's just one of the best all-around players uh, in the whole country. Yeah, obviously, not having you there will hurt a lot. As I would argue, you guys are the best player this year, but Max returning will be a huge step to having. The rest of the U Max and the rest of the second team, I think, could handle their own against anyone. I don't know. I don't know if I'd predict you guys beating UC or OSU without you there, but I wouldn't be shocked if it does happen after what happened last year. You guys can go on some crazy hot streaks. The rest of that team, not many people might know their names, but all of them can make a play whenever they want. They can all catch, all make a big throw. So if they put it together and the chemistry is right on point where it has been, I think you guys can be any team there. I think once you get into the OU, UC, Ohio State, like group. There's not one team that they can't beat on any given day if they put it together. I agree. Yeah. Um, I will say, I, I promise you, the rest of the league will know some more names on OU after this year, for sure. For sure. I, I know them, but everyone else needs to learn them, too. Yeah. No, it's all right. We were – Caleb and Alex, they were amazing players, so it was it was no shame to be overshadowed by them. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the growth that OU had when they started post-COVID. The, like, OU was – they were struggling a little bit, but the mm -hmm. work they put in is just – you can't say enough about what they did and where they put this team post their graduation, the spot they put them in. Amen. Um, we'll move on to UC, who um, – they're definitely one of the more interesting cases to look at in the league this year. They, uh, they have a good mix of returners and uh, graduates. They lost two first-team All-Americans, which, I mean, when you hear that on the surface, it's like, what the hell, what, what's next? Um, but yeah, when you lose guys like Corey and Brett, um, those are huge shoes to fill. Um, but they retain Matt Rosinski, um, another all American, uh, and Ryan Engelman for the second half of the year. I yeah, think he'll be playing in the spring. So not the fall, but he'll be back for the spring. 
so yeah, another guy, another all Ohio, all American guy. Um, those two by themselves can carry a team to wins um, against certain teams. But you also add in their solid rookie class from last year, which includes um, uh, Will Hyatt, who I actually went to high school together with. Um, and yeah, he's he recruited your own uh, biggest threat. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I already regret it. Um, no, but there, he is an incredible player. He's played a lot of NDA this summer with Omerda. Um, and the amount that he's improved from the beginning of last year to now is pretty crazy. I wouldn't doubt that he'll be on, on an All-American list, probably first team this year. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think yeah. that, that three-headed three monster right there of Will, um, Ski, and Ryan Engelman can be enough to get them to the back to the Final Four at Nationals. Plus, yeah, I know. Wes can help recruit. I mean, they're, they seem to be never done recruiting. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think UC will take a step back at all. I think they're still one of the best teams in the country. I'm excited to see what Will Hyatt does this year. I'm really high on him too, but it's like last year he had Brett in his corner and Engelman in his corner, but this year that's his corner now. So last year those team throws went to Brett. They went to Engelman. He was kind of that, like, he was really good, but he wasn't the guy in that corner. So I'm interested to see how he takes that role of being, you know, the guy. Everyone on that left side facing him is looking at him now, like he's the guy that people are going to throw at as soon as he throws. He's going to be taking more throws. I think he can handle it, but I'm, in, I'm, ex I'm excited to see how he handles it and if he improves or if he struggles for a little bit at first and then takes that next step forward. He can handle it. Yeah, I have no doubt he can, but it'll be interesting to watch. I think Definitely. I'll make sure my OSU guys are giving him as tough of a battle as we can give him. Of course, always. Um, so, yeah, they're still going to be coached by Wes, even though he is also taking on this uh, Northern Kentucky project. Um, so, yeah, you know they'll be super organized, playing good dodgeball, good fundamental sound dodgeball, um, as it's meant to be played. Um, but, yeah, uh, we'll see what we get from the Bearcats this year. They will be at uh, Buckeye Opener. Full schedule for them. I think they have uh, us, you guys, and Akron. Yeah, Akron. I don't know who. I don't know who their third game is, but they definitely got the top two dogs. So yeah, I'm excited to see what those guys over there do. And I'm super high on Ski this year. I know sometimes he's might have felt like he's been kind of hidden in the shadows with UC with Brett and Corey getting a lot of the shine for how they perform. So I think he'll have a huge chip on his shoulder. And don't be surprised if he puts out one of those like Brett ODC type performances at Buckeye opener. I think he wants to prove himself this year, and he's gunning for that high on that first team list this year. As he should. He's that talented. Yeah, he's a super talented player. Um, so our last team to preview uh, just coincidentally happens to be the preseason power rank number one team, your Ohio State Buckeyes. Give me a little rundown. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously we lost myself and Ben Darty. That's the only two starters we lost. Those are returning 10 to a team that damn near made the Final Four last year. I think we're in a great spot to take that step to be the team to beat in the NCDA. Obviously, you have Nick Kemmer coming back, who was one of the better rookies of all time. I think he can easily win MVP in his second year. He played NDA, and no signs of slowing down there. He was still one of the best players on Mutiny, which were a good team. So it's high praise for him to be one of those guys that we relied on in Absolutely. tournaments. Yeah, and that Baldwin Prohaska plays next to him. He's another super talented player, strong arm, great catching ability, great dodging ability. And then in the other corner, you have Ethan and Derek. This will be their, their last go at it, their final year, so they're going to be able to prove themselves. Derek is just one of the wilder players. He can get up you five feet away, and you still can't get him out with his blocking. I still haven't figured it out, so I don't know. Best anyone blocker else in the yeah, hands down. I, I don't yeah, think there's much of a debate. that You, could, no, you could literally throw at him like ten times from five feet away, full strength, and I think you'd block every single one. And it's he's been doing that since day one. We I had know. our alumni – <laughs> we were at first practice, we had alumni there trying to throw at him, and he was just blocking him like this, like no problem. We're like, it's not even taught, it's just instincts. I don't know how he does yeah, it, but he does. Nice. And I'm not going to mess with how he plays. But yeah, I'm yeah. excited to see what Ohio State does this year. I don't think, I know we're preseason ranked number one, but we still have a lot to prove. You got to win games before that pre that power rank means anything. So I think a 3 0 performance this weekend is expected and something we should be gunning for. Uh, we have some good rookies, some strong arms, great catchers. I'm excited to see how they fit in with the rest of the starting lineup. And I'm ex I think we can definitely win it all this year. I think this is the year. 
we do graduate a lot after this year. So if there's a year we got to go for it, it's got to be this one, especially now that we're hosting. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah, we haven't seen a host school win national since uh, Saginaw in like 2011 or something. Uh, yeah. So that would be awesome. I mean, not as awesome yeah. as my team winning, but um, it would be cool. Yeah. I'll be the first clown to say an Ohio region team will win the national title this year and break the, the streak. Ohio Write region it down. winning. Heard it here first. I'll be the first yeah. one to say it. We've been saying that for like the past five years, though. So I haven't even been around five years, so let's show it over there. The, the Ohio region has been saying that, I should say, for the past oh, yeah, five we've, years. Yeah, we've been, we've been going on for a while, but I'll be the first one to say it this year and take the L when it doesn't happen. But I, th- I really think it does happen this year. I think the three teams at the top are really good, and I think Grand Valley definitely loses some in Michigan State. Even though they lose some, it will be the toughest battle, but I think this is the year. It's tough to go back-to-back in this league. Unless yeah. you're Grand Valley in 2010. Unless you're I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a repeat yeah. champion in a while, though, so we got to keep the streak going of no repeat champions. True. Yeah, no, I like that. That's not, that sounds good to me. Yeah, um, yeah I feel like uh, we talked pretty. We talked a lot about the the matchups that we're going to see this weekend um, at Buckeye opener. We'll get to see NKU against three kind of similarly ranked teams. Um, We'll get to see uh, Akron, Bowling Green, and Miami play against some top teams and some uh, also similarly ranked teams, and then we'll see the the kind of the big three go at it with each other, um, with all three of us playing both of the uh, the other opponents. So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a stacked slate on Sunday. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a bunch of good games. I'm excited for all of them. Just you know, watch around. I might commentate OUUC just to get in the booth for one time, you know, I'm not a player anymore, so I can mess around with what I do. I coach some, commentate some, just roam around. I'm excited for this tournament. I'm excited. I think from top to bottom, there's something to be excited about for every team. You know, the top three teams, it's like, you know, who's who's the one right now? Last year, you guys made your statement at Buckeye Opener. So let's kind of see who's going to make their statement this year. I'm excited. I think it'll be OSU, but you never know with the top teams. It seems like the whole year, it's just teams battling back and forth, and you have no idea who's going to win. I know that Akron BG, it's kind of like, who's going to be the one that's the biggest threat to these top three? Because I know Akron beat you guys at ODC last year, which is kind of a shocker. So it's like, who's going to be that team that's going to shock a team up at the top? Because it happens every year. It's going to happen this year. And then there's teams at the bottom. Like, are Kent and CSU ready to take that next step forward into that team with Akron? Like, can mm-hmm. Kent beat Akron this year? You know, last year was a pretty lopsided match if they faced. But this year, I think it'll be a lot close, closer. So it'll be interesting to see what they look like. And then obviously whenever a new team plays, it's a blast. Yeah. No, it's it's going to be a great day of dodgeball. Um, and the RPAC is a great spot to watch it. Um, unfortunately, I'll have to watch on my laptop, but uh, I'll just be a keyboard warrior for the day on the streams. Yeah, nothing. You know, you had, uh, you'll have Dan Fernald to helping you out there and you guys can <laughs> battle it out with boards. Yeah, true. If OSU drops um, a point, I'm expecting just my phone to blow up. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that, that about does it for our preview. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, some podcast stuff for the neutral zone for this year. Um, we decided, uh, that we're going to introduce a new segment of the neutral zone. It's going to be a weekly, uh, podcast episode, no more than 10 minutes, probably more around like five every week. Um, and it's just going to be, we're going to call it the neutral zone rewind and it's just going to be a weekly, uh, weekly recap of uh, any tournaments that happened in the past couple days over the weekend results top performers uh, standings changes and then uh, anything any tournaments that are happening the weekend after just read those off read off some key matchups the teams that are going Uh, but we just want to kind of create something that um, we can release every week and that you can just get on put it on in the car for five minutes and you'll basically know everything that happened in the league the past weekend. Um, so look for uh, myself, Ryan Allure, Rylan Close, and uh, Mitchell Porter, um, all members of the podcast team, the content team, to be uh, to be pushing that over the next couple of weeks. So there should be an episode of that out on uh, Sunday, probably actually more like Monday night, um, so if you don't catch results from the Buckeye opener on Instagram or on the stream, uh, just be on the lookout for that. That's a kind of, yeah, 
one stop for all of your NCDA information. So that's our little announcement that we have. And um, also I will plug the uh, Ohio region preview article that's coming out the next couple of days. Um, hopefully, but definitely before uh, the tournament Sunday, as well as a preseason All-American list that was voted on by uh, a number of content team and executive board members um, with uh, some write-ups there. So yeah, plenty of content to be looking forward to coming from the league soon. And finally, some some game action this weekend. Yeah. Surely the preseason All-American list will go smoothly and everyone will agree with what the content team picks. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, so get some preseason debate going before we have the All-American debates in April. Love it. Right on. All right, Ryan, that's all I got. Thank you for joining me. Thank uh, you for having me on, of course. Yeah, of course. All right. Peace out, guys.